Hello, I'm Pam Hoffman, Everyday Spacer. Jeff Miller, 2049 Outfitters. At Everyday Spacer, we show regular folks how to personally and directly participate in space exploration, science, and astronomy. We're here on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, 12 midnight Eastern Time, and 12 noon on Saturday in Hong Kong. We're broadcasting live from Thousand Oaks, California. Tonight, um, Pam will pro be profiling Valentina Tereskova. We'll be back in 8.3 seconds. <laughs> Valentina Tereskova is the first woman to travel off world. She was part of the first five woman cosmonauts in the early 60s, and she flew in June of 1963. Pam looked into Ms. Tereskova and has more to share about her tonight. So what have you learned about her, Pam? I've learned that I did not share, so let me do that right now Good and job. set it up so you can help me out. Oh, we have a comment. Go ahead and do that. For all the grief that you gave me about not being prepared. <laughs> Hi, Dawn. Oh, uh, hi, Dawn. Welcome. Thanks for being here. I am ready. Oh, All right. Good. So, Valentina Tereshkova, for you who do not know, was a Russian cosmonaut. One of the things I really love about the Russian language, which I've studied a little bit, is it's very phonetic. So if you see the name here, you can actually work, work out the, the lettering. So if you want to start learning Russian, that's kind of a good place to do it because... It, it very much matches up. This is Valentina Vladimirovna Tereshkova. So she was, she has a fascinating history and she's actually still alive. So I won't say was. She is a Russian engineer, member of the state uh, Duma and a former Soviet cosmonaut being the first woman to ever fly in space. She's known for being first and youngest woman. And in fact, when she was in space at that time, she logged more hours than any of the American astronauts all put together had at that point. She orbited 48 times. It was almost very close to three days. And uh, she's still the only woman who has been on a solo mission in uh, Vostok. It's a Vostok 6. I think that was the last of them. We'll see that here in a minute, though. So she um, didn't really have any aspirations to be a Russian cosmonaut. Uh, she did work in a textile factory, as it says here, and was an amateur skydiver. And that was the important point. She knew how to run a parachute, operate a parachute. And that's part of why she was selected. And they did have quite a few people to work through, as you will see here. Um, and it's interesting because a lot of things were classified, you know, coming out of the, um, the, the Russian space program for many years. I did not know that she was one of five who was selected to be in the what we would call the astronaut corps today, um, the cosmonaut corps. There it is. Okay. Uh, she was, you know, one of the five and one of the persons who, um, one of the women who was supposed to be, um, you know, taking a flight actually got sick. Uh, so she, and I don't know if that was exactly why she was the first, but it possibly contributed to it. And we know how that works with, you know, American astronauts. If they get sick, they have a backup. Uh, and so all the women were invited to be a member of the Air Force uh, when they started, but they all started off, and I think it's down here, a very junior position. Uh, yeah, we'll probably see it. And she was in the Air Force for quite a long time. She, um, she retired in 1997. She's basically in politics now. And they have some information, of course, on this Wikipedia page here. Born in, where she was. Uh, Communist Party of the Soviet Union, and so on. She actually married another cosmonaut. And I have his uh, Wikipedia page up too. We can look at that. She um, did not, she was not married to him very long. This was more of a state, more of the state's idea for their marriage. Since they were both cosmonauts, they thought that was kind of a fairy tale affair. <laughs> and they wanted, wanted to really promote that. They, they were very much about the optics in Russia. I mean, Yuri Gagarin was a very uh, good looking man and he was, he, well, of course they performed, you know, they did all the different things 
uh, like the astronauts here did, um, but he was a very charismatic, likable, um, attractive person. That really helped in his selection as well as afterwards when he would tour and they, they're very proud of their space program. And they had a lot of firsts, including the first woman to go into space. So let's see, I think there was something in here. No, they do talk about where she graduated the Air Force Engineer Academy. Uh, she basically has a PhD. She did requalify for space flight, but never went to space again. And she was uh, a rank major general. Very cool. So a pretty significant person overall in Russia. She was born of pretty humble um, means. You know, they were a family in this um, village on the Volga River. Uh, they had uh, two parents and three children. Unfortunately, her, her father died fairly early on. Yeah, he died in the Finnish Winter War during World War II. He was, she was two years old. Uh, so her and her mother and, and the three children had to uh, had to move. Oh, hello. Yeah. Hey, David. Dave says, that marriage was interesting. Their daughter, Elena, was a subject of medical interest, yes. being the first child born to parents who were both exposed to space. Right. Yes. I found that out too. And it's oh, so, and maybe that's why her second husband was a doctor. I'm wondering if that had anything to do with it. Well, her second husband was a doctor. We'll, we'll get into that in a minute too, but, but he, she was very young. Elena mm -hmm. was very young still when mm -hmm. the first marriage, um, again, it wasn't a marriage of their making. It was a marriage that the state was very interested in because they thought it was a fairy tale type of, uh, marriage. It was good propaganda. It was good propaganda. Yeah. So they moved, um, and it, it says they moved to this Yaroslav, uh, for better employment. So she worked in a cotton mill. Uh, and, uh, it's interesting to note that, uh, Valentina Tereshkova was only in like the, you know, primary school from 10 to 17. Uh, but she did continue her education. She, she took it very seriously and went uh, and got a PhD ultimately. So, um, you know, they talk about her being in a tire factory and a textile mill, but she did take, uh, take correspondence courses and graduated from this light industry technical school in 1960. Now she, she became interested in parachuting, but not necessarily becoming a cosmonaut. Um, she first jumped at age 22 and in May of uh, 50, 1959, then uh, while she was still employed as a textile worker, she trained as a competitive parachutist. This was, she kept secret from her family. I don't know why. Isn't that interesting? Um, well, gee, mom, I'm going to go jump out of an airplane and hope I don't go splat. <laughs> gee, that so, might be why she kept it a secret from maybe, her family. Maybe, right. She did uh, join the Communist Youth League very early on as well. Uh, so these are kind of, kind of parallel tracks for her being a scientific cosmonaut type person as well as being politically oriented. Uh, so then they go into the selection and training and I'm not going to do a real extensive version of this, but you can certainly go and look up these yourself. I have quite a few tabs open. We'll, we'll see all of these ultimately. Oh yes. Thank you. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Keep forgetting. Um, she, like I said, she did not have any desire to go into space, uh, but skydiving, was definitely something that they were looking for. Uh, after Yuri's flight, uh, oh, here it is. Yeah, this this guy, and I, I have not heard of him before. Nikolai Kamen, Kamen. Kamen. Yes, okay, good. Uh, he was the director of cosmonaut training, and he actually read about the American media, uh, the female pilots, and they weren't actually these were the, this, and it actually shows them the Mercury 13, right? They weren't in any official program, but the same doctor who ran the astronauts through the type of training that they were and then the experiments and tests and stuff ran these Mercury 13 women through. However, their idea was, um, we cannot allow the first woman in space to be an American. This would be an insult to the patriotic feelings of Soviet women. And quite possibly another first they could <laughs> they mm -hmm. could claim. And David says the Russian doctors were concerned her exposure to radiation in space may have affected and may have an effect on an embryo. She orbited 
48 times, remember. Yeah, 48 times. And again, that was basically more time in the atmosphere of space than any of the American astronauts had been in at that time, all put together. And the effects of space were essentially potentially magic because no one knew anything about it. Right. I mean, there was no scientific reason for anything up there, really. I mean, because who knew? I mean, even the Van Allen belts were kind of fresh in thought. And so, you know, it was a mystical, magical place. Oh, yeah, that's how anything is. I mean, we didn't know what the, the moon was comprised of either until, I mean, that, until we went there. That's how the Fantastic Four got their powers. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what I love about this is they actually approved putting um, five female cosmonauts into the next group. And they actually trained them before they trained the men, which I find just fascinating. Uh, so here, here were the criteria. They wanted a parachutist under 30, less than 170 centimeters. That's five foot seven inches for our American friends. Uh, no more than 70 kilograms or 154 pounds in weight. So by January, 1962, the all union voluntary society for assistance to the army, air force and Navy had selected 400 candidates for consideration. And they got that down to 58 and those were reduced to 23. On 16 February, and this is significant for me, and I'll remember this because it's the, the exact one day after I was born. The exact one day exactly after the day I was born. She was selected along with four other candidates, and I did not realize this. I knew she was the first to travel. I didn't know there were four others as well. Like I said, though, there were there was a lot of secrecy around the cosmonaut program and the Russian space program altogether. And David says again, I did a story on her for radio last year. Oh, we'll have to look that up. Mm -hmm. um, Tereshkova also became the first civilian to fly in space. Seeing her propaganda potential, daughter of farm worker Khrushchev confirmed her selection. Yeah. Well, I'm going to argue with you a little bit there, Dave, because they did, in fact, give her a rank in the military. Yeah. So it's debatable that she was a strictly a civilian, but I get what you're saying there. She wasn't, she didn't go into the military and yeah. then be selected, but that all the women were offered a military position. Here it is. Oh, here it is. Since they had no military experience, they started with the rank of private in the Soviet air forces. Yeah. So, so they didn't come from the military. They no. came from civilian life. Whereas right. um, the early American astronauts, came from the military. Yes, they were chosen because of their military experience. In fact, that's why um that's why um our test pilots were actually some of our test pilots weren't considered for yes astronauts because right um because they weren't military. I do like this too and I'm sitting there reading it and going that sounds very much like what uh, well, and I know more about the Mercury 13 than the, the tests that the men went through in the United States. Isolation, subterfugal, thermal chambers, decompression, pilot training, that kind of stuff. So it was very, very similar, the way it sounds, to the way the Americans mm -hmm. were, in fact, um, tested out. Well, it's, I guess it makes sense because... Well, and not knowing what the, right. what what to expect out there, they would want them to be prepared for right. any eventuality they could think up. Right, and those were the things that they could think of. I mean, yeah. centrifuge gives you simulated G forces. Thermal chamber gives you hot and cold, which right, you know, decompression chamber might happen. Right. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I. So yeah, and I love the way and the Russians. The Russians are fantastic, you know. They, they're, it's all rough and ready. They build stuff and it works and it's heavy duty. Like any of the, t anytime you look at the rockets, they're like, it's built, they're built like a tank. So they, oh, and then the, the whole thing with the uh, Fisher space pen. Well, the Russians used pencils. They didn't need any pressurization to work in space. Uh, so here they are. They, they uh, underwent water recovery training with several motor boats used to agitate the water. Very Russian. <laughs> Yeah, Dave's back again. Yay. Yeah. Jashkova didn't start school until she was 10 years old. Hey, there's hope for 
anyone yet. <laughs> right. Now, that seems quite advanced uh, compared to the way we do it here in the well, United States. Except maybe the way we do it now, but in oh. the early history, in early U.S., good point. When you know farmers, yep. Um, so they couldn't she, really send the. She the was the kids. daughter of a farmer. Right. They couldn't really send the kids to school. So right. Yeah, I don't know how it is here in the states. How it was. Right. I mean, but how it compares at that time either. Our school year was pretty much designed to be. Yep. After plant, you know, after harvest and before planting. Right. So where are we here? Uh, oh yeah. So again, kept going, kept grad, you know, kept learning, graduated from these different uh, places and I've ultimately got a PhD. So just fantastic. She's no slouch. All right. So let's see. Oh, I do love this part too. They finished their training and passed an examination. Uh, Kevin, Kevin offered them the option to be commissioned as regular Air Force officers. With advice from the male cosmonauts, they chose to accept his offer as it would make it harder for the program to get rid of them after the first flight. They all became junior lieutenants in the Air Force in December of 1962. So very soon after they started. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, this this young woman became ineligible for, for the first flight due to illness. And this one was the, uh, oh, she performed poorly. I, I thought it was the backup. Uh, let's see. I think. Uh, Maybe Tereskova, Irina. Yeah. They were the lead candidates. So the three that that performed well and, and stayed healthy um, were up for the first mission. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see. Oh, yeah. They were supposed to, they, they were planning on launching the two women. Uh, it did not work out that way, though. So they sent Tereskova. Oh, hey, Cliff. Welcome. Hi, Cliff. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, so it was intended that Tereshkova would launch first in Vostok 5. Uh, well, this, this other one, Valentina, I'm not going to try that last name, would follow her in orbit in Vostok 6. However, the flight plan was altered in March of 63. So they basically launched early 63. Vostok 5 would now carry a male cosmonaut, Valerie, because, and there's Valerie right there. And you may recognize him from this picture, too. Uh, they flew alongside the woman aboard Vostok 6. They were both launched in June. And uh, let's see. Nominated Tereshkova to pilot Vostok 6. Vostok, Vostok 6 was the last Vostok to fly. <laughs> Called her Gagarin in the skirt. <laughs> I hope she laughed at him. <laughs> yeah, um, David says... She's now 76. She uh -uh. No, 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 no. Hold on. <laughs> She's like 86 right there. She's 86. 86. Um, go she, ahead, though. She has just revealed she wants to go to Mars. Yes. Her favorite planet. I have. I had found out that was in my research, too. Yeah. yeah. More to the point, she says she is happy if the mission turns out to be a one-way trip. Yep, I heard that, too. <laughs> that was amazing. I did not know that. All right, so where were we? I think we're down here. Yeah. Let's see. Last bush duck. Yeah, they were very happy with this propaganda potential because, well, here it is. Daughter of a collective farm worker who had died in the Winter War. So he confirmed her selection. Oh, here it is. This, wo this woman was her appointed her first backup. Uh, let's see. That was Irina. 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 Okay. And she was promoted to lieutenant before her flight and captain mid-flight. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> All right. So they talk about these um, Vostok launches. 16th of June, she and her backup were both dressed in spacesuits and taken to the launch pad by bus. <laughs> Following the tradition set by Gagarin, Tereshkova also peed on the bus tire, becoming the first woman to do so. Oh. Yes, 86. Yeah. Yep, I get it. No problem. Uh, so I, I found that kind of fascinating, too. Again, we didn't really have much of this information. I kind of knew about Gagarin and the other cosmonauts doing this, but I didn't know Tereshkova did either. <laughs> so pretty, pretty interesting. And, of course, you know, all that stuff is different traditions. Oh, typo. Yep. Very good. Very good. Yeah. All right, so let's see. So, uh, yeah, she was, oh, gosh, a two-hour countdown. Can you imagine? 
it, it launched flawlessly and she became the first woman in space. She remained the only woman, only woman to have flown into space solo. And at age 26, uh, the youngest, her call sign on this flight was um, Seagull, which I actually knew. I don't know how I knew. So isn't it interesting how you, okay. some, of the, some of the information comes through, uh, but not all of it. And it was later uh, an asteroid. It was named after her. And uh, I love this. She radioed down. It is I, Seagull. Everything is fine. I see the horizon. It's a sky blue with a dark strip. How beautiful the earth is. Everything is going well. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, here it is. Vostok 6 was the final Vostok flight. It was launched two days after Vostok 5, which carried Bukowski. And there he is up here. There, there they are together. Into a five-day mission, the two vessels spent three days in orbit, planes 30 degrees apart. And during Tereshkova's first orbit, approached each other to within five kilo kilometers. They weren't they weren't sure they saw each other though. Cameras placed inside, transmitted, but they uh, the footage oh it was broadcast on Soviet state television. Tereshkova also maintained a flight log and took photographs of the horizon. Uh, yeah, it's interesting stuff. So there's some real science going on there. Aerosol layers in the atmosphere. And they, they describe aerosol as being any kind of dust uh, that's uh, naturally occurring or that's created by a, by other things. Um, uh, Anthropomorphic, yeah, particular air pollutants. All right. So like in this single flight, she logged more, than, more flight time. There it is. Than the combined times of all American astronauts who had flown before that date. Her mission was used to continue the medical studies on humans in spaceflight and offered comparative data about the effects of space travel on women. This is fascinating because we didn't even launch a woman until the 80s. So 20 years later, the American finally accepted and launched a female. And it wasn't until just very recently that we launched someone who was younger than her. Oh, I don't know. Is that, um, that's all? Okay. Yeah. Maybe David will tell us. All right. It sounds like she was basic for most of her trip, <laughs> but she did orbit 48 times, which was two days, 22 hours and 50 minutes in space. So damn near three days. All right. So, and here's, here's the part where her training comes in as planned all in all Vostok, Vostok missions, Tereshkova ejected from the capsule during its descent at about four miles above the earth. She made this parachute landing a bit off target, right? Let's see, northeast. Well, and then with with the circular parachutes that they had in those days, you didn't have a lot of control over where you landed. So. Well, I think it was the wind too. Right, yeah. Oh yeah, here it is. She she revealed that she had difficulty controlling the parachute due to strong winds. So even in in any kind of strong wind, I think you would have trouble. Mm -hmm. I suspect. I don't know. I haven't done any parachuting myself. The rectangular ones you can actually steer and go against. That's the, true. You know, tack against the wind. Okay. Interesting. Kind of like uh, um, in a sailboat. Yeah. You you still will be pushed, but you, you have more control of it that way. Got it. Okay. I didn't know that. So she did land safely, however, was in, in another um, one of the other tabs here. So she was actually pretty badly bruised. Um, they, they basically... Um, covered it with makeup for any of the press conferences and stuff. So uh, the, villa <laughs> the local villagers helped her get out of her spacesuit. Can you imagine someone showing up from out of the sky in a spacesuit? It was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Although they probably all knew about it because this was this had been pretty significant. I don't think we knew about it here in the States when that happened. Do you um, remember anything about Tereshkova's flight? Well, I mean, I, first woman. I wasn't born then, but... Um... Okay, yeah, that's but true. I was did find, just born. Yeah, we didn't find out about it until after it was done, because if it had failed, oh. we would never would have known about it. That makes sense. Yeah, because the Russians were very concerned about how things looked, right. and they wanted to have lots of firsts, and they did. Right. They did. They have. They have tons of firsts. But, but we'll probably never know some of the failures because they never, you know, they never released any of any of the even failures. now, huh? Well, we do know some. There was a female pilot that died. Mm. And we didn't find out until like about 10, maybe 15 years ago. I'm not ago. sure I, I know about that either. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a profile on that. Okay. 
Uh, so let's see. <laughs> One million flowers were brought in to celebrate the success of the dual flights and greet the cosmonauts in Moscow. On 22 June 1963, Khrushchev greeted Baikovsky, dressed in his uniform, who saluted while Khrushchev hugged and kissed Tereshkova, who was dressed in civilian attire, in front of the thousands in attendance. The premier also announced that both the cosmonauts were awarded the Hero of Soviet Union Medal. And they made speeches. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty darn fascinating already. And she's just getting started. <laughs> All right, so let's see what else would be. Oh, one of the things that, uh, and this reminds me here, she toured extensively. And she uh, was uh, really famous. And, and they did lots of, uh, they named a lot of things after her. Uh, so, like, so like here, I mean, about 2,000 women from 119 countries uh, at this Women's Congress on 24th of June. It was like right after the launch, right? She received the most requests to visit foreign nations. I think even more than... She was quite popular. Yeah, yeah. I, even more than like Yuri Gagarin, who would have been very popular as well. Her trips in particular required pre-approval from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Defense, and the KGB. They were ultimately authorized by the Presidium of the Central Committee of the Communist Party, the highest political bureau of the Soviet Union. So all of them toured extensively, but Tereshkova had the most trips. Well, because, like, we had male astronauts, so we didn't care about their male astronaut. But we didn't have any female astronauts. No. So that would have been, yeah, very novel. And I don't know that she came to the United States ever. I didn't she see did. anything about that. She. Oh, I guess there's a picture with, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Because uh, uh, they're very interested in, like, like here. Havana, Cuba, met with Fidel Castro and toured the country. Although <laughs> the Hurricane Flora was a big deal at that point. And she was present, presented the Silver Cup. I think this happened a lot of places. So, uh, and some songs were, were named after her. It was just fascinating. There is a ton of stuff in here. Absolutely take a look, people. There's some really fascinating stuff. So uh, let's see. Oh yeah, here's the Angela, the picture with Angela Davis. Oh, but that's in East Berlin. Right, but she she did tour here. Too. She came to the United States. Yeah. I didn't see anything about that here. Um, and I forget who it was, but the um, whoever was first lady at the time um, met with her and was a very big fan. Okay, I don't know who that would be. We'd have to look it up. I think Lady Bird Johnson. Okay, but I'm not. I'm not positive on that. Okay. Uh, again, and yeah, David, David put it out there. She oh. definitely wanted to pursue a career as a cosmonaut. Oh, David says she was among those who were sanctioned during the Russian yes. invasion of Ukraine and the United States Office of Foreign Assets. Yeah, that's, that's down in here too. She wanted to continue as a cosmonaut and engineer. They had different plans for her in politics. Oh, and here's something interesting too. After Gagarin's death, they were very, very careful about letting her go anywhere. She, they didn't want to lose her too, her as well. Against her wishes, she was appointed as the leader of the Committee for Soviet Women in 1968. I think I saw another. Yeah. Um, they added her to the specially designated nationals and blocked, pers blocked persons list on September 30th, 1922. This action froze her assets and the prohibition yep. of any dealing with her by U.S. persons. Yep, that's down here, too. <clears throat> we don't really get very political on this show because we want to talk to you about things you can do and demonstrate how regular folks got involved with space exploration, science, and astronomy. That is actually the focus of our, our show and, and all the work we do with Everyday Spacer. Uh, but, yeah, there is definitely uh, some some intense stuff going on, even now, for, for Valentina Tereshkova. All right, so let's see. What else is interesting in here? Oh, the team of women cosmonauts was disbanded. Let's see, what does it say? Uh, yeah, they would not have another woman until Svetlana Shavishkaya, who would also be an interesting person to profile, I think. Mm -hmm. In 1982, again, another 20 years. So, yeah. She kept advancing. Colonel, uh, she earned a doctorate in aeronautical engineering. Fabulous. Underwent the medical examinations to qualify for spaceflight when 
selection of a new class of women cosmonauts was announced in 78. She did not go to space again. She uh, remained an instructor at the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. Wow. And basically has been in politics for a long time. So uh, I'm going to leave you folks to figure out the politics part. I want to talk about the space stuff. But there is plenty there to read about. All right. So she married this other cosmonaut, Andrian Nikolai Nikolaev. Yeah. <laughs> However it's pronounced. Again, it was uh, this idea that it would be a fairy tale. Well, a fairy tale message to the country. There it is. But yeah, they, they were treated very well. I mean, I don't think most people get to have a wedding uh, at the palace with Khrushchev presiding <laughs> with top government and space program leaders. So very much politic politics and space in intertwined in, um, in, in well, the, the USSR. Um, of course, now it's just Russia. Everything has changed since then. <laughs> Probably useful for politics and science. So, uh, yeah, Elena was born um, nearly one year after her space flight. Elena Andrianova Nikolaeva Tereshkova. That's a long name for, you, for a little girl. <laughs> and she, is the, she was the first person with a mother and a father who traveled into space. And like David said, that was part of why she was studied medically. But uh, they grew apart. They didn't even stand next to each other in photographs. The marriage ended in 90, uh, 1977. However, they did, did not divorce until 82. And Valentina Tereshkova remarried to this Yuli Shep Shepush. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're doing this. <laughs> he was a surgeon. She met him during her medical exams to requalify as a cosmonaut. Yeah, I saw another one. Yeah. Oh, hello. Elena Welcome. For you did. For telling. Oh. For telling. Oh, named my daughter after her. Love Thank this. you for joining us, Adelina. We really appreciate you being here and love that tie-in. Very nice. All right. So here's, and you can read this. I'm not going to go through them all. Awards and honors. It's a big list though. And it just keeps going. Other decorations on her. I mean, it's amazing how, how well she was known and all the things she's done. So I'll just continue on here. I love this part. <laughs> Matryosh Matryoshka dolls. <laughs> Gotta love the Russian. <laughs> oh, they did a replica of her childhood home. Oh yeah, Dave again. Yeah. Hello. We'll leave it to you. You seem to have all the answers to comments already listed. No, we love to hear your comments, Dave. I'm just really glad that I fr I learned about these too. Thank you. Yeah, and that talks about all the things she's named after. City Library, Planetarium, International Women of the Year Association, Greatest Woman Achiever of the 20th Century, and on and on and on. Absolutely. Uh, definitely check it out. Yeah, the streets in Ukraine that bore her name have been renamed. So, yeah. Again, politics, I'm not going to go there. But uh, please feel free to read that for yourself. I did. I did pull these up, so we'll look at those in a minute. Many, many references and on and on and on. All right. So that just continues with the references. I wanted to have some nice pictures of her because um, I don't know that people recognize her very well. So we definitely um, have seen her in different phases in her, uh, you know, space uniform and training. And as a politician, this is kind of a current picture of her uh, in different, different places. So that is her at different points in her life. And I really like the Universe Today version of it's. It's a lot of the same things that you see in um, the Wikipedia page. But uh, there were some interesting things. Let's see if I can find them. Kind of basic. Who was the first one to go? Yeah, Dave. Let's hear it. Oh, maybe you could space your talks with provision at a certain point for comments. Sometimes when a reply is made, you've moved on. Um, yeah, we know there's a pretty big gap for you in, in Australia, Dave. Sorry about that. Yeah. It's, I, I'm not sure how to do it because I don't think dead air would be a good way to go. Yeah. And 
but uh, yeah, we'll I, we'll think about it. I, I can't come up with weird off-topic comments <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and besides, those tend to generate comments. So <laughs> then we just then we're going off in two off-sync directions. Uh, but it is good good practice for when we're out there, and uh, we got to consider that. You know when they when signals go back and forth to places like mars and beyond because it gets pretty significant i think even more significant than between here and australia mm -hmm. right yeah so they do cover a lot of the same ground uh, but I, I like to have various sources for topics that we cover mm -hmm. uh, like this you know when when def is demonstrating one of the citizen science um projects we don't really look too far, you know, uh, other places, but when we're talking about these profiles and some other things, we, we like to find other sources of information mm -hmm. too. Uh, so that must be from when her father, yeah, yeah the that's Finnish the army War. pictures. Yep. So, uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out what was, what was different here. I'm trying to remember because a lot of it is very, very similar. Probably, okay. She believes sending women to space would achieve a propaganda victory against the U.S., which they kind of did, but it wasn't very um, it wasn't very well known here, I don't think. The policy did not specifically discriminate on the basis of gender, lack of women combat, and test pilots effectively excluded them from participating. Yeah, In the United States, so they actively did, did discriminate against women. Right. Yeah, because they were saying that we don't discriminate. But we'll only take fighter pilots, <laughs> and women couldn't be fighter pilots. It kind of automatically so, comes with the territory. Yeah. Yep, so. there's the criterion. I'm trying to find out what else was was different here. All the different tests. Let's see, uh, two women. There. The idea was to launch two women. All right. Maybe there wasn't that much. I thought there was something in here that was. Kind well, of, this is kind white of text different. on a black background. That's <laughs> okay, different. Thanks. All right. So here you go, Dave. Here's your your pause in the in the action. Yeah, I really love that she was up there for 48 times. That's even more than than Yuri Gagarin. Mm -hmm. He was up what, uh, what was it three three four? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, ha! she later claimed it was due to the poor food that she was nauseous. <laughs> I, I missed that the first time through. She did. Uh, it was very interesting that she did uh, manually orient a spacecraft. I don't. I don't know that many of the people were doing much, and we call that spam in a can if they're not really guiding or, or shifting things around. But so she was actually, you know, more active in um, in the Vostok Six than mm -hmm. than most of them. I think. Yeah. There's Cliff. Hello. Yeah, uploading a comment takes forever. Oh, yeah. so sorry. Yep. Yeah. Oh, here's a good one. On the first day of her mission, she reported an error in the control program, which made the spaceship ascend from orbit instead of descending. The team on Earth provided Tereshkov with new data to enter into the descent program, which corrected the problem. I mean, think about that. Uh, that's on the fly, you know, doing programming on the mm. fly. That's pretty good. Well, and, and so that's her craft what, to begin descending towards. That's us. what we had to do a couple times too. No, the the astronauts. Well, what are you talking about in particular? Because um, I know when they landed on the moon in '69, they sat there, and that was what they were good at. They were just like, let's wait and see. They well, were calm and patient. Apollo 13. Apollo 13. Ah, okay. And there was one. But they didn't really like Sh program had, stiff stuff, did they? Yeah. Did and, they? Okay. Yeah, and I didn't know that. Um, yeah, well, they would give them lines of code, which okay. basically they flipped a switch up and down, you know. Yep, that makes sense. To, to do it. Um, and I think Shepard had to do some stuff, too. Okay. Well, I know they had in, to, in to combine some parts that weren't yeah. standardized. Yeah. Well, Shepard was Gemini or Mercury. I can't remember which, but mm -hmm. but I think okay. he had to do some stuff. So, but uh, I think that was, she was still before that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, 63, 1963. Yep. Oh, there were further plans. For, okay, there were further plans for, for women, but um, none of the other four got a chance to fly. So she was the only one of, of the her her crew as well. Right. 
Well, they stopped using the Voss toxin. I think they needed to mm. figure out a new one. You know, they needed to figure out the new one. Yeah, it could be. And there's that picture again. Mm -hmm. So let's see. That's all good stuff. I definitely uh, encourage anyone who wants to look into it more. Oh, here we go. Oh, there's the stamp I was looking for. <laughs> I actually found a whole page of stamps with her on it. So, yeah, this is uh, both of them. Her husband at the time. Mm -hmm. A number of astronomical objects and features are named in her honor. And I have pictures of the crater on the far side of the moon. Um, I didn't get the minor planet, but the asteroid. Oh, it's Siegel in Russian. Cool. All right, so let's see. The, here it is. Num numerous monuments and statues have been erected in her honor. And, uh, yeah, they really love that in, um, in Russia especially. All right, so let's see. Let's go ahead and... Again, you can look at that for, for yourself, too. There's a really nice page of her. And it's a lot of the same information, but it is somebody's... Um, well, let's see what it does it say here. Starchild.gsfc.nasa.gov. And uh, there's more to it. But I just looked up Valentina Tereshkova. Hey, Dave. He's got a comment. Oh, sorry to be negative again. The, nope. num the number of words is limited in comments. Oh, yeah. no kidding. The longer... Reply oh yeah, on YouTube. To yeah. you is broken, and when it comes on, it doesn't it doesn't relate to what is being talked about now. Yeah, and yeah, we try and hook it up though and, if we know what you're talking about. Yeah, and sometimes if you write a super long comment, it'll break it into multiple comments, and they don't necessarily come in the same order that you sent them. Oh, far out. Yeah. So, yeah, that's um, think of it as texting, I guess. Okay, yeah. You you can essentially double text. Well, I didn't get this out of the, the stuff I read before. She was the second. She was the middle child. <laughs> Interesting. So yeah, there's some there's some good stuff in here too. And it's possible I just missed that in the other material. But uh, I do like this little bit here. Why was the medical community interested in Valent Valentina Tereshkova's daughter? And uh, I didn't actually know that until I looked at the answer. <laughs> so it was kind of a fun little site. It, oh, Reminds me a lot of Dawn's. And Don, Don actually says, oh, I'm yeah. so bad at typing a message. It takes me forever, too. Yep. Yeah. All right. So what else do we have here? I pulled up some of these pictures. Uh, Nikita Khrushchev, Valentina Tereshkova, Pavel Popovich, and Yuri Gagarin at the Lenin Mausoleum. So this is pretty much right after the flight, I believe. Mm -hmm. They say when down here. Yeah, 22nd of June, 1963. Yeah, Dave. Yeah, I, he says, I realize it's part of the system, but it makes it participating damn difficult. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah. And I really, really wish the system would allow yeah. um, us to do video back and forth. Right. But as the delays and the connection are just yeah. so bad. It was... Yeah. It was so nice when we first started because we could talk yeah. to you guys in real time. Yep. And then I guess maybe as more and more people started using it, it just got yeah. worse and worse. I don't know. Uh, oh, do we get another one? Yes. Oh, Cliff. Hey. He says, it takes about 3.5 minutes for a comment. Oh, my God. <laughs> and on the wife's phone, uh, 13. <laughs> How long does it take to get to Mars? What is it? Seven minutes there and seven minutes back? for yeah. yeah 14 minutes round trip yeah and this is a picture of their wedding lots and lots of russian people very happy I, gee <laughs> they're russian people that surprises the heck out of me <laughs> this was this was later that year 3rd of november 1963 yep. that was a busy year for these folks yeah and uh here it is, here's a page about andrian nick Nikolaev. <laughs> Here's the Russian again if you want to learn Russian. I'm telling you, it's all phonetic. All those letters match perfectly to all the English letters. So it's a really great way to start. All right, so he, he's actually gone now. Oh, I think we got another one. Oh, David. Yeah. Tereshkova ejected from her capsule during its descent around four miles above the Earth and landed by parachute. Yeah, yeah. can you imagine four miles above the Earth? That sounds pretty high, even even now i don't think it's i don't think it's a record or anything but 
Yeah. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Um, and my whole thought of parachuting is, you know, stay with the airplane. If it's still got two wings, you know. Why well, jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Yeah. But of course, she was in a giant BB that was basically going to crash into the ground. So, yeah, I guess it was good to get out. Yeah. It was just a, it was just a brick at that point. All right, so this was the man she married, her her first husband basically, and he this was I I kind of knew this but I kind of forgot too. He was the third Soviet cosmonaut to fly into space, so that would have been a pretty significant marriage. Oh. And the fact that they had a daughter together, uh, and they 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 um talk about his oh. being a shuvash. And oh, Turkic, a Turkic ethnic group. Yeah. Okay. I well, didn't look at all this stuff when I was doing the research. But um, yeah, it's all propaganda. I mean, um, two, yeah, two astronauts here. You're you're going to get married and you're going to have kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think it quite turned out that bad, but yeah. I can see that being a factor. Oh, what, right. we got another comment. Yeah. David says, Gagarin's flight was basically illegal. The chute landing was not in the rules. Huh. Okay, I don't know anything about yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know what even what you're referring to. That's no. That's interesting. Huh. Um, okay. I don't think we've done a show on New York Gagarin, have we, or have we? I thought we did. I, I thought so, but I forget. Um, so, you know, they go into his background a little bit and but uh, certainly not as extensively as hers. They don't even mention her as his wife in here. Yeah. Well, he, which is remember, he was more military than she was. So probably a lot oh. of what he did, they can't, they won't talk about. That's possible. Yeah. Also, right. he wasn't the first woman to fly. So he's not as no. big of a propaganda coup as, right. as she is. Um, so, yeah, you can read about that, too. Uh, they talk about his history, but that's not the topic of our, our um, oh, here it is. Here's usually they put that sort of thing in this. I don't know what you call this over here. This block the of bio, the bio. Okay. Um, but I didn't see it there. I, I see it here though. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, they do relate uh, to her, but uh, yeah, I think you make a really good point, Jeff, that being military, he's probably not going to have as much in the public eye. Mm -hmm. as she does all right so then we looked into elena a little bit and it's interesting how practically everything i see is of elena and her mother or elena and her parents that kind of thing but she did go on to be a doctor so that was interesting and there's some good stuff in here if you want to read about it she's uh 58 59 years old uh oh she'll be 59 in june okay good mm -hmm. and more i just want to make sure that you know there's there's stuff out there and I think I've got, uh, yeah, see, again, a lot about her parents. Not that much about her. But she kind of stayed out of the public eye. All right, so you can go on and look at that. And she's also on Reddit again. It's about Elena, but whose picture is here? <laughs> it's her mother's. Uh, I don't think there's very much here, but it was very interesting to find all this. But here are some good pictures of Elena and her mother, her parents. I think this is kind of a recent picture here. But, uh, yeah. Yep, there they are, the loving family. <laughs> All right. And this is about her second husband, Yuli Shepard. <laughs> that one. <laughs> but look, a picture of Valentina and her first husband. That's odd. But they do go into some information oh. about him. Oh. Um, so oh, no. Dave says, our, and now the comments are not running oh. in order. Got to go. Sorry I'm about sorry that. I'm sorry about your frustration, Dave. Oh, there's one from Cliff. Did we? Oh, no, there's um, Tersh. Oh, here's one. Tersh Oh, we saw that one. Okay. And here's one from Cliff. Yeah, about 19 to 20. So many people watching Netflix and movie shows. Oh, and I gaming see. on the internet. Eats, ah, it's up for us. Far better <laughs> midnight. at midnight. Yeah. It's midnight for dawn. Okay, Cliff. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're in the middle of. We have the afternoon on Saturday for <laughs> yes. for Clef. Right, so everybody's using up the bandwidth. Sorry, man. All right, so yeah, it goes into his. Uh, they they're both gone. Both of her husbands are gone, uh, but Valentina is still around. Mm -hmm. 
What happened to her husband? Yep. He was a successful surgeon. And I, I wonder if that's why um, Elena got into medicine. Oh. All right. So there's some legacy as well, even now. Uh, the crater. Tereshkova is a relatively small crater on the far side of the moon. <laughs> well, they'd already named all of the ones on the near side. <laughs> I see. Okay. And they go into a couple of views of it, and it's shaped like a rounded hexagon. You can learn all kinds of stuff about that. Oh, and there's the stamp. I love the stamps. And I think this one is actually Russian. SSSR. Yeah. And then was, I went and looked it up. I was like, oh, are there more? Oh, yeah. There's a bunch more. And they're so colorful and beautiful. So, uh, yeah, Valentina, very well known. Uh, and that was this is one of those uh, links from that that other page about uh, women astronauts, astronauts, cosmonauts, taikonauts. Uh, I think they're all here. I think they're all listed here. So uh, definitely a good source of information for some future work, maybe. Oh wow, Valentina's listed first. Yep, she was the first to go. <laughs> That's Svetlana. I mean, the, the Russians had the first two women astronauts. Look at this. I think they. What do they say? Do they say when they go over here? Yeah, missions, 63, 82, 84. Oh, Svetlana went twice. That's cool. 84. I thought Sally Ride went well, 80, 82 83 as well. 83 and 84. Look at Sally Ride. There's two lines there. 83 and 84. You're right. Missed it. Judy Resnick. And they just have all kinds of... Uh, do they actually have the, the Chinese... Well, we'd I have don't to, remember seeing that. We'd have to get to more current They stuff. even have Helen Sharman. Isn't that awesome? First British citizen in space. Second woman to fly on a space station. Fly on a space station. Soyuz. She went on the Russian Soyuz. 91. There's a fabulous movie about her. <laughs> so uh, we'll probably look at this someday. For more information. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Oh, um... Oh, Japanese oh, first woman. Japanese woman. Oh, I didn't realize that there was a Japanese woman who went. First Asian woman. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it's a fairly long list, and I think the Chinese won't be coming into it until near the end. Oh, and and I, I just remembered something else of significance that I wanted to mention here because they do list them, and this is uh, some information about when they died, that kind of thing, um, compared to the men who have flown. It's a pretty low number. I think it's something like 79. Uh, whereas there's been almost 600 people who have gone all together. Okay, so, oh, there's, the, I think she's Chinese, right? Yeah, China, China. And it's nice, the flags are in the middle. That's probably a good way to find them fast. Uh, okay, so we even have Sean Proctor and Haley Arsenault who went in, um, you know, a commercial. Wally Funk. They took commercial flights. All right. So, but yeah, there's, oh, 76 here. Yeah. Oh, they have, oh, yeah. How go old ahead. was Haley? Um, oh, they're right there. Um, well, they don't really say how old she 21, was. 91 to 21. So she was 20 years old. So, yeah, she's so, pretty young. Oh, no. That's 30. Oh, 91 to 21. So she wasn't yeah, as young as I no. thought. No, as as but yeah, they have, they list 76 here and then some more, let's see, what's the deal with these astronauts and astronaut candidates. So these may or, these women may or may not have flown. Yeah, I'm not sure, but still it's a significantly uh, fewer, mm -hmm. there are significantly fewer women so far who have gone to space. So another 26. All right. What else do we have here? Was the female heroes of the Soviet Union? I thought that was kind of interesting. And again, it's a link from that that first page. Um, but they do um, they do have some good information in here, if you so choose to check that out. And I think this might be the last one for this. Ah, there is a, a small role that Valentina had in this attempted assassination of Leonid Brezhnev. She was one of the cosmonauts. Dressed as a policeman, Ilya moved unimpeded through a large crowd waiting at the Kremlin. They were clustered at the this Borovsk gate where special water came. I don't know how to pronounce these words. Uh, let's see, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Shoot that. I think I thought they mentioned that there were here. Okay, here. 
successful cosmos of Soyuz 4 and Soyuz 5. They were transported to an important official ceremony, but Valentina was in this too. There she is. Uh, no. They, no. they proceeded. Oh, other cosmonauts from earlier missions. So there was this, um, this event and there was an attempt on, um, on this man's life. And she was part of that. All right. So that's the only reason that's in there and that's for later. All right. So any other comments, folks? Oh, I think, uh, I think, no, I no. guess we saw that one. Yeah. We saw that one. Thanks so much everybody for being here. I'm so sorry. It's frustrating for you. <laughs> it's probably going to be that way with, with space flight too. Yeah. All right. Oh, I got to get there. Don't I? Here you go. Yeah. Some stellar events this week. May 12th through May 19th. A little bit night continues. May 11th through the 20th, uh, 2023. In the Northern Hemisphere, we look for Leo and Buuktes. Oh, or you get a choice. Yeah. Yeah, pick one. Um, in the Southern Hemisphere, Crux or Leo. And you pick the one that looks, you know, easiest to see for you. Snap a shot. Go to the website. Upload it. And um, select the the comparison image that looks closest, and that way they can rate uh, the dark skies around the world. Yeah, yeah, very important work. Yeah, that's a great citizen science project too. Yep, something that just about anyone with a phone can can take part of. Yeah, you can do it on the on the website online too. You don't have mm -hmm. to have a phone. Well, I meant for snapping the picture. Yeah, that's everyone's true. got a camera now because they've got their yeah. phones. Right. Um, May twelfth, last quarter moon. May 13th, Saturn and the moon are in conjunction. May 14th is Mother's Day in the U.S. Yeah, I don't know if that's true in other places. Yeah. Tell us. Yeah. And Neptune and the moon are in conjunction. Also, Mercury is stationary. I'm going to assume. <laughs> so I guess they, retrograde's over. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to assume they mean that it's visually stationary. So many people have said to me, oh, Mercury's in retrograde. That's why everything's cuckoo. <laughs> It's okay. Well, it was cuckoo before Mercury was in <laughs> retrograde, too. So I don't think that has much to do with it. I don't know. But it's stationary, so I guess that part's over. Yeah. May 15th, the moon is on the equator. May 17th, the moon is at ascending node. And Mercury and the moon are in conjunction, so that could be interesting. Although, it sounds like it'll be pretty low in the sky if the moon was, was on the equator the previous day. Um, also occultation of Jupiter by the moon. That could, that be, could good. be something to look for. Yeah. Might that's the really, 17th of yeah, May. Might have to have a really low horizon though to, to see that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe Dawn would know. May 9th, May 18th, Uranus and the moon are in conjunction. May 19th is a new moon. Also, it's our Friday night show uh, next Friday and I'll do another profile. Stay tuned to find out who. Find us on find us Fridays at 9 p.m. Pacific time on the Everyday Spacer Facebook page and the Everyday Spacer YouTube channel. Some other events and activities. I found something cool on Facebook. Let me go back to my page if you don't mind sharing again, Jeff. Our friend Janet Ivy announced internship, so you can become a NASA intern. The deadline is May 26th, though. You could, you're a full, you could be a full-time paid internships. There are opportunities for all majors. New internships are posted every day. You must be a U.S. citizen, though, and enrolled in a degree-granting program or within six months of graduating. Have a I'm minimum <laughs> have a minimum of 3.0 GPA. And they had a website, so I went over to that website, and I took a look. So you can read up on this if you are in this position in the U.S. and you want to check it out. Let me put that in the, uh, I'll actually put that uh, into the, um, into the notes, into the comments, the comments yes. and thereby making it a clickable link. All right, there we go. You have anything else to show? Uh, I'm just going to scroll down this page okay, a little sure. bit. So hang on. Uh, they talk about interns uh, for... A different different types of interns. Uh, Pathways intern. This is just a regular old intern. Fellow international intern. So there are some options for uh, folks from other countries. It's not just U.S. citizens. 
So you want to check that out if you are in another country. And they have some information, top, uh, top things to know about NASA internships and some videos. I definitely think you want to look over everything very carefully if you apply for this and follow every single thing that they need you to do. That is the fastest way to get eliminated is to not follow the instructions. Just like actually winning a prize. You want to follow all the instructions because that's the first thing they'll do is eliminate you because you didn't. I think I saw a comment. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. G Dawn says Jupiter would be early morning. Okay. Doubtful if it'll be visible. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, so the next thing is Everyday Spacer Week this year triggers the Everyday Spacer 2022 Awards. We are taking nominations and we'd like some help if you are willing. Uh, we'll pick the 2022 winter winners winners during World Space Week in October. Uh, the 2023 Humans to Mars Summit is May 16th through the 18th of this year at the National Academy of Sciences Building in Washington, D.C. This upcoming weekend. Yeah, that's very, very soon. Um, so if you or someone you know has done something interesting involving space exploration, science or astronomy, we'd love to share our live. Um, and thank you, Cliff. <laughs> Good show and thanks very much. Cloud, cloud gods are out, <laughs> and no, I haven't bought any new space gear. <laughs> Take care and see you next week. Glad you could make it. Thanks for joining us. You got to tell us about your next yeah. the next show though. Still, yeah, we'd love to share our yeah. If you are something, yeah, we have already said that. Join <laughs> us again next Friday, May nineteenth, and I will profile Robert Goddard, considered the father of U.S. rocketry, at least by some. Yes. Um, I think he's overlooked by a lot of people. Yes. Which makes, which is symmetric because at the time he was overlooked by everyone. And it wasn't until. <laughs> well, they thought he was crazy too. Cause well, yeah. But it wasn't rockets. until Sputnik flew over everyone's heads that then when they started scrambling looking for who's this Goddard guy that kept mailing <laughs> us? Oh, wait, we got a guy too. And there's a great song about that. It's from mm. minus 10 and counting. Yep. All right. Shout out Cliff and Dawn and Dave. Thanks so much for joining us. And, and, it, and oh, we had another one. Adel Adelina, thanks so much. So glad you could be here this week. Yep. I and I it. think that's it, right? Yep. Thanks, folks. Have a great week. We'll tell you about Robert Goddard next week. I think that's going to be a fascinating show myself. Yep. Good night. Good night. Mm -hmm.